Have you ever thought about owning a second property in the Dallas-Fort Worth area or even in the region, including Dallas-Fort Worth? Most of us have. Have you thought about owning a rental and creating some additional income? Have you thought about having a short-term rent? Maybe someplace you'd like to go and play at the lake or down by the American Airlines Center or by the Cowboy Stadium or on a little bit of land where you could hunt and fish and play and ride four-wheelers or whatever. Have you ever dreamt of owning a second property? Whether that be purely for your use or for financial reasons, most of us have. As a real estate broker, I talk to people all the time that do that, but it's also one of the most popular casual conversations I hear about from people that are not real estate professionals. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about where those opportunities are and what they like. Historically speaking, I ran into a lot of people that say things like, I've always thought about that, but I've never pulled the trigger. Or they talk about how complicated it is or how hard it is to find a deal. And what I would say to you is it is not that hard. It's also not easy, but it's not as hard as most people make it out to be. It's more achievable for you than you might think. So let me give you some tips and some thoughts and some ideas just for you to consider. I'm not here to tell you what to do or even how to do it. Obviously, we could help you do that if you want. That's what we do here in DFW. But you may want to look at the potential return on investment of a long-term rental here in DFW compared to where else you might invest in the stock market or paying down your own home faster or maybe some outside type of investment. Historically speaking, owning residential real estate in Dallas-Fort Worth has been a tremendous investment that has outpaced many others and had very, very, very few loss of value seasons. And the ones that it has had have been very, very short. So let's say you wanted to buy a long-term rental, meaning a house that other people live in. They, they rent it long-term for a year or more. Really, that process is very much like when you bought your own home. If you've never bought a home before, that's kind of a different category. We could tell you more about this, but this is mostly for people that have already bought a home and would like to have a second or third or fourth or fifth. So most people are kind of looking at the bread and butter properties. You generally want to look at a three bedroom or two bathroom, maybe a four, two, four, two and a half in that average square foot range, 1800 to 2800 is a good range for most areas. You're typically looking for an area that is prime or renting. For example, in a very desirable school district, a lot of people would be willing to rent in that area. Maybe they can't afford to buy in there or they're not going to be there long term, but they would be willing to pay a premium rental because they want to be in that school district or near that thing, whether it's parks, an entertainment district, an area with some a lot of good jobs, it could be anything near the airport, whatever the case is. So you want to think about where and what would be most marketable. Typically, it's in that three or four bedroom, mid to average size range. A lot of people think about a 1% rule. So if I had to pay $300,000 for the house, but I rent it for $3,000 a month, that's what we mean by 1%. Would it rent each month for 1% of its total value? Normally, that math will help you become profitable. If you have to borrow way too much of that, that might not be profitable. You're also looking for other ways to increase your rental income. What services can you provide, whether it's lawn maintenance or other things like that? Maybe you want a short-term room. Maybe you'd like to have a condo down by the American Airlines Center and go to concerts and go to ball games because you live a little further out. Great. Maybe you'd like to have a lake house. You got all kinds of lakes around North Texas where you could have from Possum Kingdom to Tewakini and Lake Fork and beyond in every direction. We've got lakes. Maybe you want to spend one weekend or two weekends a month out there and rent it out when you're not there and break even or better absolutely still possible in today's real estate market. The gap of education between having bought and owned a home that you live in and buying a home that you don't live in is not that significant. The financing can be a little bit different. And then the management is usually the biggest one for people. The burden of managing a property yourself scares some people. There's a few techniques like home warranties and having a local contractor ready and on speed dial and with kind of a prearranged fee structure that can alleviate a lot of that fear or bringing in an outside property manager that you appropriately vet ahead of time can alleviate all of that if there's enough margin in that transaction. Now, the question is, are we buying these properties only for monthly or annual cash flow? Or are we also factoring in potential appreciation? My recommendation is that you buy them for cash flow, but you evaluate them for appreciation also. We cannot guarantee appreciation, but with contracts and leases, we can almost guarantee fully that rental income and regular cash flow. We always want to evaluate potential maintenance needs. What if we have a roof problem or an air conditioning goes out or we have bad weather and it damages something? We need to factor that in. So there needs to be enough margin in the rental 
for that to make sense. But if you've thought about buying a second home for rental reasons, we can overcome most of those fears and concerns with pretty simple systems and strategies and relationships with professional vendors. Now, maybe you've thought about buying a second or third home for the potential short-term cash surge of a flip or a long-term flip. Short-term flip would be buy it, fix it, sell it as fast as you possibly can. A long-term flip is where you might buy a home, move into it and live in it for at least two years so that you can take advantage of the tax benefits of it being your home for two years or more and selling it with tax-free gains up to $250,000 for an individual or up to $500,000 for a married couple. Now that could still be your second home if you then turned your first home into a rental short-term or long-term or some other type of investment. So those are kind of the core four ways most people look for their second home. Short-term rental, long-term rental, short-term flip, long-term flip. You might be looking for your eighth or ninth or 10th home. So some of this might be fairly basic for you. You may be thinking more about a 1031 exchange where you're selling a property and rolling the revenue from that property into another one so that you don't have to pay taxes on that investment strategy right now. All of these things are possible to you and none of them need to be overwhelming to you after one or two hour long conversation. If that's something you're thinking about right now, let us know. Where would I do that in the Dallas-Fort Worth area? I would do it in those desirable school district neighborhoods. I would do it near local colleges like University of Texas at Dallas or North Texas or UT Arlington, Texas Women's, SMU. And obviously there are others, R Richland College, Collin College is opening multiple campuses now. Those areas are a draw for a population of people, students and others that are prone to be renters paying at or near the premium rental rate. So I would look at that. I mentioned near American Airlines Center or near where the Cowboys play or where the Rangers play or the Stars play. These are places where if you're going to do short term, you might get a premium in certain seasons, but you need to think critically about what do you do in the off season or in the downtime. If you bought a lake property, can you make that marketable during the off season winter months or can you make the cash flow work getting a lower rate during those times? These are all things that are actually solvable pretty quickly and a great real estate professional and lending team can help you think through those strategies. My encouragement to you is go ahead and do that. Do it now if you and your family and your finances are ready, because I would love to be having the conversation with you about your fourth or fifth or sixth property, that you're diversified from your income now for your retirement later, maybe for what you might have to leave to your children or to fund ministry or giving or retirement or whatever it is that you're looking at. Residential real estate in the Dallas-Fort Worth area is a phenomenal way to invest for cash flow and appreciation and to diversify your investments and to give yourself flexibility of use and the enjoyment of use and the ability to have more options later. I believe owning residential real estate in the Dallas-Fort Worth area is one of, if not the best investment you can make without having to take on some new area of expertise. If you already own a home, owning that second home is really not that big of a leap. If you're looking for more information on how to do that, when to do it, where to do it, what to borrow, how much to put down, how to evaluate the cash flow on that, we would be thrilled to offer our expertise. If it's not us, find a pro with the proven track record of doing that. But this is something I recommend you do. So if you thought about that second or third or property or beyond, I say go for it. But get equipped first and then go for it. The bridge between where you are and being fully equipped is not as far as most people think. That has proven to be true for me for many, many years, for many, many clients and many, many friends. Don't be that person that in another 10 years is still saying, we think about it all the time, we just never have done it. Do it. If we can help you, let us know.